Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. Today is, uh, well, what is today? Today's the 15th of March, and we are just getting into spring where things are beginning to come out of winter dormancy and grow. One of the things that we need to do this time of year is we need to make a stockpile of grass Jadam liquid fertilizer. Now we'll show you a link to uh, a Jadam liquid fertilizer video that we did way back last summer where we made it out of zinnias, but now what we're gonna be doing is making this out of grass. So the question might be, why are you, do you wanna use grass? And the first grass of the season's got some really great things going for it. Uh, it's usually higher in magnesium and higher, um, you know, it's like a deeper green. You want to find that kind of grass it's really started to come out of dormancy and grow fast and it's also got at least one to one and a half percent nitrogen in it so this is a great all-purpose and it's cheap and it's free usually any place where you got really good well-growing grass you can turn that into a liquid fertilizer in the span of a few weeks so what we're going to do today is this area here is off of one of our um, drain lines that comes from our tiled field. And this area is really actually fertile where the drain line is itself. Um, the types of grasses growing in here uh, are just, they really take off first. So there's a lot of mineral content and stuff that comes up from the, uh, the water that comes out of the, the tile. And these guys respond to it really well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hack a whole bunch of this down and we're going to haul it back to where we're going to mix up the fertilizer and we're just going to show you the process pretty quick but it's not so much about the process it's about spring is the best time to start making this kind of fertilizer so what it's for us what we're going to be doing over the course of the next probably month and a half is putting enough of this stuff up so that we can have this general purpose fertilizer that we can use on our flowers and our vegetables and things of that nature through the season into October. It's like um, food preserving. Yeah, in a sense, you kind of got to think of it that way, is you get to strike while the iron's hot, so to speak, because once the grass goes to totally to um, forming all kinds of seed head, and there's a few seed heads in here, but that's not that big of a deal. But once it gets to the stage of, of like, you know, somebody's gonna cut it for hay, uh, it still has, you know, a mineral content, but it's not as good as it is right now. So that, that's why we're going to do it. And, and yeah, over the course of the next month and a half, we're probably going to put up, um, where we're looking to get some decent sized barrels. So we're probably going to put up probably 50, 60 gallons of this stuff. And it's a general purpose fertilizer. Uh, what we do is we apply it on our seedlings, our transplants, and, and actual things growing in the tunnels and in the field, and we apply it on a foliar basis or a soil drench basis. And usually the dilution for us is somewhere around, if we're applying it as a foliar feed, we use it right around a dilution about one to 200 to one to 300 in that zone. If we're applying it as a soil drench, um, we're gonna, we can go higher and our dilution, dilution rates like one to 100. Uh, that's where we've kind of seen a good response. On seedlings, um, you know, they're growing on, getting ready for transplant. Uh, we usually use it right around one, one to um, 200 in that zone. And we apply it on a weekly basis. So this stuff uh, will actually um, give you a nice general mineral content, a nice general low nitrogen and magnesium and those things to help out. Doesn't introduce grass to our no, growth. no, because what this is going to do, this is going to anaerobically ferment. So, if there is any seed in it at all, which at this stage there isn't, but if there was, um, the fermentation process would basically kill it. And we're not actually using the solids; it, it, we're using the liquid. So, it, yeah, it's not a problem. And it would be the same thing. If, well, what if there's a bug on it or something of that nature? Well, what you want to do though is, if you see sick grass, don't make fertilizer out of it. You know, you you know, look at the grass that's that's greening up well, growing fast. That's the kind of stuff you want to look at because it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. So, we're going to use our handy dandy scythe, 
and we're gonna whack a bunch of stuff and then we're gonna take you over to the crate house where we're gonna mix it all up. Okay, we got a nice tub of grass here, probably more than we're gonna need, but that's okay. We, we're gonna pack it into the, into the uh, barrel, or not barrel, but uh, bucket here really good. We're just making a five gallon batch today. And one thing, you know, if you don't have a scythe or a hand sickle or anything like that to cut it, um, using a lawnmower is fine. So it wouldn't matter if it got chopped up a bit, as long as you get it fresh. Don't leave it in the sun and let it dry out. You, what you wanna do is you wanna get to it when it's as fresh as possible. I'm using a scythe here uh, simply because I, I, I guess, frankly, I like the scythe. It's a lot less quiet, a lot more quiet, I should say. And it's, uh, I think, I, seen, I tend to get a pretty good product when I use the scythe and cut the grass instead of mashing it, but it will work the same either way with a lawnmower. So don't sweat it if you don't have a lawnmower or you don't have a scythe and you have a lawnmower, use the lawnmower, it works well. Okay, let's take it back. All right, components we use. Again, just to review this, got our grass that we cut, got a bag of biochar here. This has kind of just been pounded out, it's fine. I reuse the same bag since it's kind of a bag of charcoal. We got uh, some azomite, just for rock powder. And then our soil we harvested from below our compost pile last fall. We use this for making JMS as well as, as uh, to do this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a good inoculant and that's, so that's basically it. Biochar for odor control, azomite, some minerals also assist in odor control and then basically the material we're going to compost. So the whole point on this is you don't have to be fancy about it. We're just going to pack it in and put a layer in and then we're going to throw a little a little handful of soil a little handful of biochar wow these are precise mm -hmm. these are precise yeah it's precise and a little azomite and then do it can again. you take can you show me the bucket inside please well i could yeah thank you there you go okay okay so the whole thing is just getting packed down pretty good, you know, and kind of, we, we're going to pack this bucket minimum three quarter full, maybe even a little more. I don't want to have any air pockets in here. So I'll put another layer. We're going to have more than enough grass, but Wait. it's always fun to cut grass. What are you going to use the rest for? Uh, probably just mulch around the eucalyptus. It's been shown in studies that biochar can reduce odors. Um, it's in a sense, it's a form of charcoal, which is, you know, that's how they make activated charcoal. It's basically from charcoal. So there's lots of, you know, biology also on the surface of these leaves. So that's all good too. And the nice thing about this fine biochar is, is when you mix it up in solution, we'll show you what our aged um, grass JLF from last fall looks like. We made some, uh, some stuff back in October just as an experiment to get it started. And uh, we've been using it actually for the last, last month. And uh, the fine biochar gets suspended in the solution and it I think it, it just is just another great add-on into your soil for, for 
uh, for uh, helping the plants. So it's not complicated. We'll try to make this fast so we don't, you know, drag it out. Can we see inside the bucket? See inside the bucket. And then we throw in biochar. Cool. And then we throw in some azomite. Not a lot. And repeat. And repeat. It's kind of like shampooing, you know? Only we don't repeat that many times. <laughs> Okay, we got the last layer in here. We're gonna put another nice, generous handful of, maybe two, of compost soil on top. A little more biochar. And another last handful of azomite. The azomite helps with odor control, but also has a nice selection of micronutrients in it. So let's just make a mess. Tip the bucket, please. Tip the bucket. Now you notice that I had gloves laying to the side and I didn't use them. That's me. I like to get my hands dirty. Okay, last step now is uh, we're gonna fill this thing up with water up to about an inch, maybe not even quite an inch, less than an inch from the top. And, and then um, the stuff might try to float, but we'll just uh, push it back down and then we've got a snap lid with a uh, rubber gasket or a, a gasket in it uh, to control moisture escaping, odors, etc., bugs from getting in, all that kind of stuff. This is just going to sit in the back of our crate house and brew for like uh, three months. So, like this batch here, we'll probably use in June. Um, we're going to go bigger though. I mean, we've got to make a lot more gallons of this stuff. And we'll show you what like our sweet pea. Um, uh, seedlings that we've been fertilizing this with for the last uh, three weeks and show you kind of what they look like They're ready for transplant in the field. So we'll show you what the results of using it is also going to show you the bucket of stuff That's now five months aged and just kind of what it looks like and Denise can testify to the odor I don't smell anything Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay I'm gonna fill it with water and then let's look at uh, look at you know how the thing has been working for us. Cover up my inoculant. Good enough, I guess. It's just gonna start trying to force itself out. I guess I'm full. Squishy. It's dripping. Yeah, as soon as I get that liner set, it'll be fine. Okay, this is the back of our crate house. It's kind of, right now, it's still an area that's uh, like not, de not developed. So we're just kind of using this to age out our uh, liquid fertilizers. We've got <clears throat> now five buckets of these guys. And we made some last late last summer out of a tomato. That's for our veg coming up. Uh, we made some out of apple. And that is basically, it's more of a, a higher calcium type thing. It did not turn to vinegar. Matter of fact, I checked the acidity on this thing and it is, um, it's neutral. So there's no acid in it. And it has a slight, um, apple smell to it, so it's kind of actually pleasant. Was it actual apples or yeah, it was actual. Prunes? It was windfall apples. So it was the apples that, uh, you know, fell off the tree that, uh, you know, you wouldn't use for much of anything other than to compost them. So, and, that, and that's what's in here. Actually, we could probably open this up and just take a whiff. <laughs> it's a little bit too. There we go. We already start to smell a little bit of the apple already. Looks ugly. 
and uh, there's still a few apple pieces left but that's okay and so um, this is going to be used for like um, spraying on the apple fruit trees but also for like uh, anything fruiting uh, would be excellent for it lots of calcium in this because the fruit itself has a lot of that in it so I'm thinking I maybe mixing this together with the grass and using it for um, like lisianthus, which need a fair amount of calcium. What do you smell? It smells actually pretty good. It does, doesn't it? It's very fruity. It's very I mean, fruity. not overly powerful no. fruity, but it's fruity for yep. sure. Yep. So, and uh, actually, this this was packed. I mean, I, I solid packed this just like I did the grass, and you can see that. You know, so much of it's just like, it's just to just turn a liquid. I mean, there's some stuff, you know, that hasn't, you know, gone, but uh, we'll get like probably, you know, two thirds of this in the liquid easily. So that's good. Okay, so we just make sure that's sealed back up. All these lids have a rubber gasket to them. Okay, this one over here, uh, we can open this guy up is the um, tomato. Now is this tomato fruit? This is all tomato fruit with plant. some suckers from, you know, when you pinch out like, um, you know, uh, leaf or branch growth that might, when you're when you're trying to take out the center, or not center, but the um, side branches off of. Not quite as pleasant as the apple, but it, it definitely. Uh, no, no, it's not pleasant. <laughs> that one's pretty yucky but you can see there's some tomato stuff left Whew. but um you know and this one is i made this one before i put biochar started putting biochar in so um i think that's this was just straight compost soil uh, with the fruit and the water so i didn't put any like azomite or anything like that in it. i'm backing up yeah, it's like <laughs> interesting stuff yeah okay it's still good though, just a little stinkier. All right, and then this last one here, um, this is the marigolds that we made last summer. Uh, we have a video on that, you can check that out. We've been using some of this already. This was marigolds taken at the bloom stage, so it had a lot of uh, blossoms, spent blossoms, things of that nature. But you can see it doesn't even look like marigolds anymore. But What's all the white stuff? Th it's just a, a gray mold that grows on the top. It's not that big of a deal. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Let's see. Um, you can see most of the flowers are gone. What's left are kind of like sticks. But, um, and, and you can see how thick the material is. And it's actually, you can get past the mold part. That doesn't ache you out too much. It's actually um, a, quite a thick brew. This was the first one we put biochar in with the azomite. I don't really smell anything. You don't really anything. smell anything. You know, if you get close to it, you can kind of pick up like a marigold whiff to it. But this will be perfect for bloom stage of the flowers, uh, foliar feed. And that's kind of what we were using on the anemones for a while until, uh, you know, really we're at a point now where the anemones are kind of winding down. So or we'll be here in another week or two. But this, when they started showing bud, we used that. This is our general purpose grass, and it was made last fall. So this one, this one's, God, we made that in August or early September. Yeah. I think, or maybe it was, maybe it was October too. I kind of lost track, but it, it's at least, these two are at least four or five months old. This is what's left of the grass. And um, yeah, it's got a bit of an odor. But it's not that bad. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't punch in the face, knock it out. I mean, you can see I'm pretty close to it, but my olfactory senses are dead because of COVID. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not funny. <laughs> but you can see, you, you can see, uh, you know, how deep and, and dark it is. So it's full of uh, nutrients and it's full of, uh, you know, liquid biochar. And actually, if you do get a whiff of it, it, oh. it kind of smells like manure. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So now you know why manure smells like manure. It's not the cow, it's the grass. Oh, man. <laughs> Put the lid on that one. Ooh. I didn't smell it at first, but then all of a sudden, wow, it is pungent.
Yeah, but it goes away fast. You know, when you apply it, it you, you smell it for like, you know, maybe, and, you know, depending on the day um, and how much you put on, it smells maybe for an hour, you know, but actually once it's applied, it, it kind of almost smells like a fish fertilizer, kind of like manure kind of thing. So it's not, I mean, if you're used to applying organic things, it's not, you know, so obnoxious that it'll knock you down. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So we have been applying um the grass and um did a little bit of the marigold stuff on the blooming stage for um ranunx and, and anemones but basically this is what we've been using we've been using the grass one for our seedlings let me show you okay this is an example of of um sweet peas that we've been fertilizing with the jlf and these guys were pinched and they're now starting to put out you can kind of, I don't know if you can zoom in here, but this is getting to be pretty typical. They're putting in, they're starting to sprout now at the base, which will be, these guys are just about perfect for putting outside. They've got nice, good, strong root growth. And we've been using um, uh, JLF at uh, one to 150 dilution on these guys once a week. And uh, they seem to be responding really well to it. So, did you need to see the roots again? Yes, please. Okay. Let me see if I can pick up the right one. This is the one I was holding, I guess. Yep, there's the roots. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's gonna be an air prune in this crate, but these are gonna be field planted and we're still getting freezing temperatures for the right. next couple of days. So we're uh, not gonna be transplanting these guys for probably a week or two. It's okay, they seem to be doing okay in here. Um, but as you can see, the foliage is, is like, it, it's pretty good. I mean, uh, what's, what's happened here is, is the new stuff coming up is looking really good. The older stuff is, is you know, this is all gonna get pinched off anyway. So, cause what I do is I look for the strongest near the base um, sprout, because typically it's, it's usually a stronger stem. And that's kind of what I go for. Like this one got, you know, here's a classic example. Doesn't, what germinated, this is the stem that it was, was came on germination. This is what's coming from sprout from near the base. So it's looking really good. So anyway, we just uh, wanted to kind of tell folks that if you're gonna make any of this stuff from grass, now's the time to do it. Do it when you're, you know, when your grass starts growing and growing vigorously, because that's when it's gonna have a lot of really good stuff in it. And um, typically the amount of time older is always better we're kind of targeting to not use our JLF until it's aged at least three months and so like the one we made today is gonna to be probably sometime in June we use it we're gonna be buying some um, 30 gallon barrels uh, to make this stuff in a larger amount because this was kind of like a proof of concept for us and it does work and it seems to be working pretty well and it's free well, essentially free. The barrel's probably the biggest expense. Yeah, when we get a barrel, barrels are just expensive anymore. Um, but, you know, they're also gonna be used for a long, long time. So, you know, once you start to use it again, when you're using your containers for this stuff, the chances are pretty good. You're not gonna get it cleaned out enough that you ever get all the odor out of it. So. We're you not know, using them for anything else. These are going to be used for this. You are actually writing on the bucket, so. Yeah, because I figured, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be what it is. So, uh, thanks for joining us today. Just uh, kind of wanted to do an update on this aspect of what we're doing here on the farm. So the leftover grass in the back. Oh yeah. We're gonna mulch it. Yep, yeah, I'm just gonna throw that around uh, the pussy willows and uh, the other uh, like woodies that we have out in the field. Nothing so. goes to waste. No. So as a matter of fact, uh, when the grass gets a little taller, I'll be cutting uh, with the scythe for mulching purposes for this summer for all the woodies out there, um, and it just uh, does a real quick job. So I'll, I'll we'll probably do a video on that. Yep. Yep. Okay, thanks for joining us, and as always, everybody stay safe out there, and y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.